Welcome back. You made it a part two. Thank you for coming. And here we're going to talk about decimals and division. Joe has four one dollar bills, three quarters, four dimes, and three pennies. Mark has three one dollar bills, four dimes, and two pennies. What is the difference between the amount of money Jill has and the amount of money Mark has? First things first is we have to review money. If you forgot, that is totally fine. I'm going to do a quick review here. So $1 bill is a whole number. So we have $1 here. Dimes are 10 cents, or you can also write it as 0 0.10. We have pennies that are 1 cent, and it can be written like this and a quarter, which is 0 0.25 if we are talking about decimals. So this is our review. Remember, dime is 10 cents, penny is one penny, excuse me, it's one cent, and quarter is 25 cents. One of the things that caught my attention is when it said difference. Anytime you hear difference, I think of subtraction. It's like automatic. Subtract, take away, whatever you want to call it, that is what we are doing today. So we have to compare Jill and Mark. We have here four $1 bills for Jill. So all we have to do is four times one. We have three quarters. And if we want to remember, let's put it here in the corner, right? We have quarters, dimes, and then pennies. That's all we're working with for as far as coins. If you don't remember, those are our coins that we're working with, right? Here we have our quarters and we have three of them. So we're gonna do three times 0 0.25. We have dimes, which are right here, 10 cents. We could do four times 0 0.10. And pennies, which we know here is 0 0.01 for one cent. So we have three, and there you go. Now we find this out. So four times one is four. If we do right here to this side, right? We have 0 0.25 times three, five times three, five times 15. Three times two is six plus one is seven. And then with three times zero is zero. So here we already have 0 0.75. Now we have four, well zero times 0 0.10, which is also our dimes. So we're going to do the same thing times four. Four, four times zero is zero. Four times one is four. Four times zero is zero. So here we have 40 cents. Penny, so 0 0.01 times three. Keep everything in order so that way you don't mix anything up. So we have three times one is three. Three times zero is zero. We have to keep the, the, the decimal point right there to keep the place. Three times zero is zero. So that is our three cents. If you ever get confused, just think about when you're going to the supermarket or going to the store to get your chips and stuff. Four times zero is zero. Four times one four we keep the decimal point in the same place four times zero is zero so we have 40 cents the total amount so we're gonna do it over here so we have four zero point seven five zero point seven uh, four zero and zero point zero three which is three cents forty cents and seventy five cents Four is a whole number, so we have to keep it in alignment. And if you want to do that, to make sure we're all in the same order. Then we have five plus three is five, six, seven, eight. We have seven plus four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have to hold the decimal place. Four plus one is five. So Jill has five dollars and eighteen cents, right? Or if you without the without the dollar sign, it'll be five and 18 hundreds. All right. Here with Mark, we would have 0 0.4, 
0, which is 40 cents, 0 0.02, which is 2 cents. Remember, we got to hold the place value for 3. You can do this if you want, but it's very good to get in the habit of that. You add it. Now we have 2 plus 2 zeros is 2. 4 plus 0 is 4. And now we have 3 plus 2 zeros is 3. Remember, the next step is difference. Remember, we had the difference. So we have to do $5.18 minus $3.42. Make sure it's aligned correctly. So 8 minus 2, 6. We will regroup. So 11, and then take away 4. You could do the count back method, which is 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. If for whatever reason, you still don't remember because I still use my fingers sometimes. And 4 minus 3 is 1. So our answer is 176. Let's recheck our answers here. And yes, we have B as 176. So you got yourself a point. <laughs> Next problem. Which value makes the comparison below true? Here we have a number. We have a comparison symbol. And we have a decimal. When it comes to comparisons, it's very important to know the basics of it because what happens is that they will do this for fractions, they'll do it for decimals like they did here, they'll do it for mixed fractions, they'll do it for a little bit of everything. So let's make sure we understand and understand the comparison. So we have this one, which I always think of L, and it's always less than. All right? This one is greater than. This equal sign is equal. This one, the greater sign with the line underneath it, that it means greater than or equal to. Then this one, again, look at the L, and it's less than or equal to because it has the line underneath. So that's first things first that caught my attention for this one is whether or not it has that line underneath. All right. So we already know that this would be less than. So check, we know that. Now we have the decimal 0 0.6. So here are your answer choices. You have A, which is 0 0.6. Well, that's why I wanted to make sure it didn't have the, the line under the L or the less than sign. So this wouldn't be it because it's not equal to 0 0.6. 0 0.7, remember we're looking for a number less than. So 7 is bigger than 6, so no. <laughs> Then we have 0 0.59, which we're getting closer, but let's check the other answer choice. We have 0 0.64, so that means, uh-oh, it goes up. So this can be it, and guess what? This means that 59 or 59 hundredths is less than 0 0.6, so this would be our answer, 0 0.59 is less than 0 0.6. What is the value of the expression shown below? When I hear that, I just want to remind you that when you're taking any kind of test or you're taking any kind of state exam, they're going to just use a lot of words <laughs> to just say one thing, which is in this example is to solve it or to just to answer the question. That's all that means. So don't get scared. <laughs> so here I wanted to show you two different ways to do division. We have the big seven method and we also have the repeated subtraction. Whatever works for you, feel free to do it. I'm just going to show you these. For this one, we specifically are working with numbers that are easier to do mental math with. So 26 into 2158 or 2158, we could use numbers like 10, 20, 30, and 40. For this example, I would use 40 because we want a number that's big but not too big. Go with the 6. Let's see what that is. So 26 times 40. All right, so we have 0, 0. Hold the zero there. Four times six is twenty-four. Four times two is eight. Plus two is ten. So that means look at that. We're already very close, right? So we got forty. Now we can erase that, or if you're doing your problems and you want to keep it on the side for just proof of what you're doing. So we have a minus zero is eight. Five minus four is one. One minus zero is one, and two minus one. Well, look at that. We could do another 40 and we'll be good. So let's see what happens there, right? We know that if we did 26 times 40, that would give us another 1,040. We subtract that, 8. 8 minus 0 is 8. Uh-oh, now we have to regroup. Now we're 11 
minus 4, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. 0 minus 0 is 0, and everything else is 0. Now, 26 into 58. Well, I know just by playing cards that 26 times 2 is 52, because when you split a deck of cards, it's 26 person. So there we go. We're going to use 2. Now, let's see what happens. 8 minus 2 is 6, and 7 minus 5 is 2. Well, guess what? Boom. 26 divided by 26 is 1. So there we go. Now, all we have to do now is just add that. 1 and 2, which is 3. 4 and 4 is 8. So that is your answer. I almost forgot. We got to show the other way. What I usually tell parents or tell students is to do the 26 is on the side, it, since we don't know them, right? So we would have 26 times 2, which is 12, 52, which I just talked about, right? We have 26 times 3 which is 6 and 3 is 18, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 78. Remember, we're getting close to 15, right? We want 4, so 6 times 4 is 24, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 104, 26 times 5. This is why it's important to also know your time tables, right? 6 times 5 is 30, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13. And then we have... Remember, we're trying to get to 215, so we're getting closer. So maybe I'll skip up to 8. Let's see what happens when we skip up to 8, right? 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 2 is 10. Excuse me, 8 times 2 is 16 plus 4 is 208. And look, we did it. So now we're at 8, right? 8 times 36, we do 208. Well, 15. Minus 8 is 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. 78. Well, look, it says it here, right? We have 3 times the 26 gives us 78. And here we have a 0. So both ways you get the same answer. Just different methods, different strategies. Use what works for you. Remember, you want to minimize the amount of errors that you make. All right? Which expression is equivalent to 65 times 0 0.15? Here we have the 65 times 0 0.15. Automatically, I'm looking at the answers, so I don't really have to do anything to the 65 if you see all in all of these, right? So that, no, I don't really have to do too much. But what I see is a 0 0.15. And what happens with the 0 0.15 is that it is something where we have to break apart. So. If we know how to do the break apart method, we always usually do like tens and fives. Guess what? 0 0.10 plus 0 0.05 give us 0 0.15. And we could check that. This is where I always tell everyone, please watch your zeros, watch your spaces with the decimals. This is very important. So 5 plus 0 is 5, 1 plus 0 is 1. The decimal place, right? And then the zero. The 0. 0.10 is the same as 0. 0.1, which you would do 65 plus, excuse me, times 0. 0.10 plus 65 plus 0. 0.05. Reason being is that you are not only multiplying the 0. 0.10 with the 65, but you're also multiplying the 65 times the 0 0.05, which the only one that makes sense with that would be letter D. Trey and his friends equally share 12 ounce jar of applesauce. How much applesauce in ounces does each person receive? Great, so we know Terry and his friends are sharing something equally. That automatically means division. Check every measurement. And I'm going to keep repeating myself because I want to make sure that if we have to do any conversions that we are aware of them. This one is just straightforward, right? So we're going to have to divide what Trey and his friends. The hidden problem in here is that Trey and his friends, if you notice there's an and in here too, is kind of telling us that we have to add. So now we're doing Trey is one person, four friends means four, right? And then now we have 4 plus 1 equals 5. Now we have the 12 ounces, and we're going to have to divide by 5. Now we're going to make this into a mixed fraction. So this would be 
5 goes into 12, right? If we do this, 5 goes into 12. 2 times, you have 10. Remember that this is the denominator. And then we have two holes. And then what's left over is our numerator or our remainder. So this would be the answer. Now, if they wanted an answer for a decimal, 5 into 12. 5 goes into 12 2 times. We're left with 10. Now we have the remainder 2. Now, let's put a little decimal point here, because if we look at for the place on the chart, it will be like this, and this would be a decimal here. So we have to carry that down, and then now we have a zero here, five goes into 24, and then that leaves us at a zero. So 2.4 would be the answer if it was a decimal. Next problem. Maddie buys five notebooks and three pens. The price of each item is listed below. Notebook is $2.85 each. A pen is $1.79 each. Maddie pays for the notebooks and pens with a $20 bill. How much change will Maddie receive? Great, so this is a multi-step problem and like I said, it's also an open-ended. So you wanna make sure you show all your work for questions like this. Here we have three notebooks, excuse me, five notebooks for $2.85 each. So, you already know, that means we have to multiply. So we have to do 285 times five, which is, well, five times five is 25, eight times five is 40, plus two is 42. Now, five times two is 10, plus four is 14. So that's how much she spent on notebooks. So let's write notebooks just to keep everything organized. Now we have our pens, a dollar and 79 cents times three. So we have nine times three, which is nine, 18, 27. Seven times three is seven, 14, 21, plus two is 23. Three times one, three, plus two is five. Five dollars and 30 cents and 14, 25. So we are going to add these up because we want to know how much in total she spent to see if she has enough for the, with the $20 bill and what is left over. So we have 7 and 5, that's 12, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5 and 4 is 9 and 1. So we have the $20 bill, like I mentioned, we, when it comes to a full number we put a decimal in the back. We can add a few zeros to help us align everything correctly. We have 1962. Uh-oh, we have to do a lot of regrouping. Be careful. This is why they gave this one, right? So we have 10. This becomes a 9 because we have to regroup again. Then um, this becomes a 9. And then this is an 8, right? So we have 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 6 is 3. 9 minus 9 is 1, and a 0 and 0. So she has 38 cents. Oh yeah, she could buy some, some, some gum. That's great. Hey. What is my 42? and 42. Just wanted to put out there that if you ever do need extra additional help, I offer private services and also free and weekly classes. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions about any of those to help you become a math pro like this. That's a wrap, guys. We finished this video. I can't wait for you to see my other videos here and the other ones here. Please like, share, subscribe, share with your friends who are having some problems with math. Take care. I'll see you next video. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely out of sight.